ladies and gentlemen, we are with Tannis. Tannis, my French again is. <laughs> <laughs> Folks off camera, I was practicing her last name. So, and my friends in Quebec are going to be cracking up. <laughs> How? Papan? Pa? Pa? Paranto. Paranto. Tannis mm -hmm. Paranto. And Tannis mm -hmm. Paranto t plays Tammy, the casino. Gambling casino waitress that really uh, played a pivotal role in Doug Stamper's life, who's played by Michael Kelly. So, uh, Tannis, first of all, tell us tell us about your name and your background, because I think you have a fascinating background. Um, sure. Um, well, I'm uh, from a small town in uh, northern Alberta. It's called Peace River, up in Canada. Um, it's around 6,000 people, the population, and I was born and raised there. And I uh, lived in Edmonton, which is one of the big cities, uh, one of the two big cities in Alberta. Um, went to, got my undergrad there, and then I lived in Vancouver for a bit, which is a bigger city, <laughs> and then um, to New York. But my name, um, Tannis, my parents, well, my mom told me was my parents knew um, a couple that had a, a kid, daughter named Tannis, so when they were wanting to name me, they just loved the name so much they chose it. But um, I have since learned what it means. Um, I'm, uh, I'm part Native American, and um, I'm Cree. And actually, Tanis, the, there's a word in Cree, um, and I hope I pronounce it right, it's uh, Nitanis. It means my daughter. So actually part of, and it's spelled N-I, well, I mean, it's, they're not actually English letters, but like the T-A-N-I-S in my name is part of Nitanis. So um, it's rather fitting that <laughs> that's my name. Um, and then once the internet was invented and I could Google my name, I found out that it's Tanis is an ancient city in Egypt. Um, and people tell me that there is a Tanis root in the movie Rosemary's Baby. And there's also a half elven character somewhere in a fantasy novel named Tanis. And also that actually it's a it can be a shortened version of um, a Slavic name. There's a, like, a long time ago, um, Slavic kings and um, saints were sometimes named as Stanislaw. I think that's, I don't know if that's how you pronounce it, but Tanis is apparently a shortened version of that. So, but essentially, I think because of where I'm from and um, my my bloodline, my ancestry, it comes from the Cree. And you said you are a mixture of two Indian bloodlines. Did I get that correct? Uh, um, well, sort of. It's it's a little hard to uh, explain, but so in Canada, um, there's different groups of recognized, of like federally recognized Native Americans, um, and the Métis Nation is uh, one of those uh, indigenous groups, and that's I'm a member of the Métis Nation, um, but I'm also Cree because in the states they don't federally recognize the Métis as um, a tribe, they don't, because they're not technically a tribe I guess, um, but they recognize the Cree. So, but, it's so, it's so hard to explain in just a couple sentences, but, so yeah, my blood is Cree, my I'm a member of the Métis Nation, basically. So, I, as much as I can, that's another video, but I'm curious, how did you get discovered for House of Cards, because this thing is blowing up all over the place. Uh, and so are you. So, uh, how did you get discovered for the role of Tammy? Um, well, I have a, a manager that I've, uh, I'm working with in New York, and um, they got me an audition um, last July, I think it was. I was got a phone call, and they said they had an audition for me, and I went in, and it was with Julie Schubert, um, who has since won an Emmy for casting the show. And, uh, yeah, I went in and had a short session with her and then there were no callbacks. She said she just sends the tapes to Baltimore because that's where they were sh everyone's always in Baltimore because that's where they were shooting. And then they just usually just make their decision um, from that. So there was a span of two weeks between um, my audition and when I got offered the part. And um, actually, the, I only auditioned with two scenes. I auditioned with um, the casino scene and then the scene that got deleted. And then in that two weeks, of time, um, they ended up. Well, they call. I kept getting a phone call every other day and saying, "You're on the short list. You're like 90 percent, you know, gonna get it." But there was like 
couple people that have to sign off on it and oh they want to know if um, you're willing to do two more scenes and so one was the seduction scene they called it and the next one was the morning after scene so <laughs> I had to be okay with that. <laughs> yeah, seduction and morning after <laughs> yeah <laughs> and said, yes I'm, I'm totally fine with that you know I, I've seen the show I started watching the show for research when I got my audition and um, I, I trust the writers I I, everything's done in, in, I think, in excellent taste, and I have no qualms with anything that they were going to throw my way. So that was basically it. Yeah, I got an audition, and then I just booked the part. So, but the good thing was, um, is that it's a Native American role, um, which I'm not sure is essentially clear now that for to a lot of people because that deleted scene is taken out, and I, it was acknowledged in that deleted scene that I was part of the tribe. But anyways, um, so it was a Native American role, and um, these days. Usually, most casting directors, when they're casting Native American roles, they will look at just only Native American actors, which is which is really nice and making progress that way. So that was, um, I think, a good way for me to get in because they were looking. You know, the Native actor pool is is not as big as some other pools of actors. So uh, to get the audition and have that part of it, right? So. Was that actually in that scene? Like you were talking as if uh, people have, everyone has seen the scene, but for those few who haven't, let's talk about that, that scene because you play a waitress named Tammy. Mm -hmm. And so for my viewers, you are, yeah, set, set this up. What's happening here for, for people who haven't seen it yet? Okay, so um, well, she's a cocktail waitress in the casino. Um, that's uh, the tribe's casino. Um, and uh, the tribe that she's enrolled in, and she's. Um, do you want me to go into like my character too? Or sure. Just, yeah, absolutely. Just, yeah, because this is this is. This is um, well, yeah. she's. Okay, so she's um, a year sober. She uh, joined the uh, joined the program. She calls it, um, and she's. Uh, you know, doing her regular job, and she comes across this man who only orders a club soda and nothing else and she can just sense that she says it takes one to know one and yeah. um, they connect based on that and uh, because Doug Stamper is uh, 15 years, 12 years now I forget yeah, well, that's right. <laughs> but something, and it really yeah, impresses her that he's gone, that he's um, been sober for so long because that's a goal of hers is to keep it going um, so something that she finds, she doesn't come across people like that very often, so, um, yeah, they, they connect that way, and uh, then the other scenes happen. <laughs> now, was it, in the directing, because it was James Foley who directed you, right? Um, yeah. Yeah, did he say, okay, you're taking him home, because you were the, what's fascinating to me about the role as a guy who's watched the original House of Cards, like, nine times, and, and I'm hooked on this one, is that, Unlike the original Stamper, this Stamper seems to have another side to him, and it's mm -hmm. like you unlock that side. Mm -hmm. Is that was that the idea? Am I misreading that? Um, or are you just aggressive? <laughs> insight from Stamper's point of view. Um, I don't really know about that, but uh, Bo Willman, the showrunner, gave me a little bit of insight into Tammy um, that she. Yeah, she takes the reins. She's been through a lot, and she knows what she wants. And, and I could see that from just reading it. The great thing about uh, the writing of the show is so brilliant. And even though there's, I didn't have, you know, my scenes are short, but they're, they were so rich, they're, and my character was written with such complexity. I had so much to work with just based on, even before we added those two scenes in. Um, so, yeah, that... Is there a bio yeah, she on her? what she wants, and she's taking the reins, and she's leading the way, sort of thing, with um, Stamper. Is there a bio on her that indicates maybe you'll be back for a season three, perhaps? Because it's not clear that Doug Stamper's dead. You know, he just was knocked out. I haven't watched the rest of the season. Sorry! <laughs> but unfortunately, I, <laughs> I actually heard that spoiler already, but um, I'm going to... I'm probably gonna forget it since I'm <laughs> time really hard to forget it. I have four more episodes. <laughs> oh, so um, I'm ahead of you. <laughs> but it, it wasn't mentioned to me that uh, Tammy would be a recurring character, but and I don't know how the rest of the storyline goes for the end of this se the season. So um, who knows? But I think that um, hey, Doug's so wait, so on opportunity. Hey, so we can have a rallying cry to bring you back then. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah, let's do that. Okay, I'm sorry. I didn't mean, I didn't mean to interrupt, but just that was an idea there. <laughs> it was such an amazing experience. But um, I think Stanford saw an opportunity, um, and a couple, <laughs> many birds with one stone with this opportunity. So um, the fact that she was the one who's, you know, really taking the reins and being forward about everything, he grabbed his chance to find out his information. And, and um yeah, I think I'd like to think he was attracted to Tammy, and yeah, yeah. <laughs> there were definitely things they had in common. So, and if he wasn't, you know, so caught up in Rachel, <laughs> maybe things would be different. <laughs> I, 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 that's what's fascinating about. Well, I, before I get to that, I have to ask also: Did you were you taught? Did, did the director ask you to talk with your eyes? Because what's fascinating about the scene is what's not said and a lot of it's said with your eyes and that's what to me lights up the scene was that the director or was that you or where did that come from um i, I that came from, from me i um yeah i just with with i mean, i i do theater and i do film and tv and, and a lot of actors that do both know that there's a difference with um you know projection and and uh, where things are happening um, in your body and when you're doing film and TV and you're on camera and the camera is really tight there isn't a lot of movement that you can do because you, you might move out of frame too fast or whatnot but you know it's it's all happening right here so that's just a uh, um, training that from as an actor no you did a wonderful job at so let's expand Tannis on working with the director. What was that like? Because this is a legendary fellow, right? Mm -hmm. um, well, I, I was, like I said before, I was a little nervous going on set because it was my first you know, big role in a big production like that. But um, James was, uh, even that first day that I met him that I didn't work, he was super laid back and, and super nice and super welcoming and made me feel at ease right away and just took that nervousness right out of me. And then um, I met Michael Kelly the next yeah. day, which was our first day of working together, and our, the first scene we shot was the seduction scene, so um, I, right away I was just <laughs> made out with Michael Kelly for like a oh, Which I gotta ask, I've never had to, what, how do you get ready for a love scene? I mean, what do you just go, I mean, did you just, how do you do that? I mean, because you may it look easy, but you're being directed, right? Um, <laughs> yeah, that was another great thing about James, was because that scene, um, yeah, uh, Tammy, you know, takes the initiative in that scene, and um, and uh, also the morning after scene. Uh, James just said to me, "He's like, whatever you're comfortable with." Like, he, you know, I had a little bit of guidance, like, um, you know, have this conversation here, and then and then Michael kiss her right after you say this line, and then you know, take him towards the bed, and then have another bit of lines come out, and then um, kiss again, and then just you know, just go wherever it. it he, he gave me direction on what he wanted me to do um, and allude to basically before the scene was over. Um, but also gave me, both of us, a lot of freedom with them. Um, just whatever we're comfortable with. And Michael was, was really great too and I couldn't have asked for a better scene partner. He was, we got along really well and um, we're really comfortable with each other right away and he's a stellar, stellar, stellar individual. Yeah, he's a and, um, I I felt super comfortable. Everyone... Um, on set was amazing and, and uh, yeah, I just I just felt really embraced and uh, I felt like Michael just kind of took me under his wing and uh, just made it uh, a really awesome experience. So I was really grateful. Even for, so for the morning after scene, um, too, James said to me, they alluded a little bit to, like in the audition, um, when they were, um, or sorry, after the audition, when they said they're going to add these scenes, are you going to be okay with a little bit of nudity? And they said, it might be, quote unquote, a little bit of side bum. <laughs> and I said, yeah, that's fine. And, and then the way they shot it, um, it was exactly pretty much how, what I thought it would look like. And it was far away and it was blurry. And um, But James even said, he's like, whatever you're comfortable with. It's, he's like, I'll totally leave it up to you. And, um, and he did. And I'm so relieved because... I just, I just thought the worst is like, well, what if it's not enough and he's going to want more? But he was he was great. Hey, I'm curious. The scene in the casino, was that an actual casino? Or you can actually go and visit and say, I was here and we filmed it there? Um, it was, where did we shoot that? We shot that in a hotel in sort of like a big lobby area. Um, 
but it wasn't actually a casino. It was in Baltimore. Yeah. Baltimore. yeah. But, like they just set it up. Oh, yeah. Cool. Awesome. You said you watched, probably got a chance to watch the UK version, right? No, not yet. Oh, I'm going okay. to at some point after I finish this season. Yeah, but I'm really interested in seeing the difference. So I don't think I'll see my character in it, though. <laughs> did you did you expect this to be when you signed off for this? Did you have any idea this is going to be like really as big as it's becoming? Because this, it's all over the place now. Um, I At the time I got my audition, I knew it was... Uh, it was going to be a, a, the biggest deal of my career um, if I booked it thus far, and then um, and then the Emmys happened shortly after, and I think it was September, and I, I shot my scenes in August, two days in August, and so once that happened, I knew that it was going to get bigger, and uh, it just kept growing and growing after that. So it was, it's been a pretty exciting right now that it's finally out. It's, right. Uh, it's, and, 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 it's, it's, and it's changing media in the process because it's not television as we know it. It's something that, I mean, for people like me in the YouTube business, it's great, you know? <laughs> it's something else. But it was a fantastic experience. Like, and I honestly, I couldn't, I couldn't have asked for a more amazing experience. Everything from my audition on has been incredible. Everybody that I've worked with has been so incredible. I was a little nervous. Going to set, my first day on set, I met, they brought me to the sound stage. I wasn't working, but they brought me to meet James mm -hmm. fully. And, uh, you know, he's a director of one of the greatest movies of all time, Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross. Right. And, uh, and I got to watch um, Kevin Spacey and Robin Wright do a scene, the scene where the, um, she comes in and he's working on the painting, the little mm -hmm. soldiers. Mm -hmm. So as soon as I got to set, when they were going to introduce me to James and hair and makeup, um, I was getting escorted from the car to the sound stage, and there was, you know, trailers everywhere, and I hear on the radio, Kevin's stepping, and then I just had a little freak out because it just dawned on me, you know, <laughs> and this trailer door opens, and I hear this thing down the stairs, and Kevin Spacey walks out, and he's going to set, and, and so we just followed him in, and I sat there, and then I got to watch, you know, two masters do this incredible work. Oh, so... Tell me curious about this deleted scene that because at first I thought we were talking about this off camera about Lanigan, who's the casino owner, and I was under the impression that Lanigan had put you up to taking Michael home, which obviously is wrong. Yeah. Right, it was all you. But what was this deleted scene all about with respect to Lanigan? Um, wait, well, he um this wasn't in it, but essentially why the scene happened was because somewhere, you know, um, in, in that time after um, Samber leaves and then that scene happens and Tammy goes back to work, Lanigan finds out she is the one who gave up this information about the casino. Mm -hmm. So the scene was um, just Lanigan um, threatening disenrollment, basically, of uh, Tammy and her family and that sort of thing. And it was a really short scene, only a few lines, and she, um, that was that's pretty much it. Yeah, because later in House of Cards, I think you have four episodes to go, which you'll, what happens is that Doug is uh, photographed in part talking with you, and it's found that that was uh, used in the, the uh, investigation of corruption against the president. And so it was that photograph and that scene that oh, it, it was, yeah, oh, it, yeah, it, yeah, yeah, it's a photo, yeah, so it, that's a, it's this hugely pivotal scene, and I was like, and I was saying last night, I thought, holy, I, I don't want to curse, but I was like, wow, you know, <laughs> holy shit, that was like, this is like major, because had he not been there, there would have been no evidence to tie uh, Doug with the uh, with Lanigan, and Lanigan with Raymond Tusk and everything else, yeah. so it was that scene that this where everything just sort of literally turned. It was like a house of cards, you know? So, oh. uh, you know... So, I think this whole, I used to yeah. Yeah. So, was, I, was it a casino photograph, or was it... A it was the casino. He was sitting right there, casino drawing oh, okay. that. Yeah, yeah, the club soda. And I was like, I thought, and I, I, was, I, I was like, I went, holy, I said, holy cow, let's look at that. Yeah, <laughs> so it's a pivotal scene. Oh, yeah. wow. Is that what you're watching? <laughs> So what is your, this the current role that you're playing in Manhattan? Because you're in New York right now, right? Yeah. yeah. Tell, tell my viewers about, is it Manhattan? Did I get that correct? 
Manahata. Manahata, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so that's a play that I'm, we start rehearsals at the end of April and we um, run week 15th to the 25th at the Public Theater, um, which is a big off-Broadway theater here in New York that I'm really thrilled to be working at. Um, so I just actually did a play in January um, called Miss Lead. And that playwright, her name is Mary Catherine Nagel. Um, she's a member of Cherokee Nation. She also wrote Manhattan. And I did two, like, just table read-throughs of the play by the last year or the year before. And so now she's a part of, um, the public theater has a group called the Emerging Writers Group. And oh, I have a cat. Yeah, bring a cat. Kiss, kiss, kiss. Let's say hi to the cat. Hi. And that's Annabelle. Hi, Annabelle. <laughs> Um, so, Mary Catherine Nagel is a, was a part of the Emerging Writers Group, I think, last year, and so there's this new um, sort of program that the public is doing called the Public Studio, which is, from what I gather, they're taking two playwrights and running the two of their plays um, in repertory for like seven performances over the ten days. And it's not quite a full production, but it's more than just a workshop production, so somewhere in the middle. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm really excited for that. I'm playing the lead, um, the protagonist. And that comes and starts in May, right? Yeah, May 15th to the 25th. At the public. Mm -hmm. And so, what? You also were involved in a bikini competition. You because you on your Twitter account, you say you're in the deadlifting. And I thought she's like right. trying to be a superwoman. Well, What's going on here? <laughs> so. <I was> like, <laughs> um, well, so very. My undergraduate degree is in physical education, and. Um, uh, my focus was physical activity and sport performance, and I'm a lifelong athlete. I grew up playing sports. I was never actually really into theater until uh, my last year of my undergrad degree. Um, so I've always been into um, fitness, and I started training. Once I graduated um, from grad school here in New York in 2011, I started, uh, I love strength training. It's just my favorite thing to do um, when it comes to fitness. So uh, I started studying on, in my spare time, just um, following strength coaches uh, and reading their work and learning a lot just for my own entertainment and uh, using it on me. Um, but one of the coaches I followed, uh, his name is Jason Perugia, he, at, up till that point, was writing mostly for men. And then he, um, his wife is also uh, very into fitness too. Um, and they were developing a program together um, targeted at women. And they wanted guinea pigs for this program. So, because I had been following his work, I saw that he posted a contest. Um, you had to send it in photo, and you had to answer these essay questions um, why you wanted to work with them. Because the prize was working with them for three months for free online, and that's like with I don't know how many thousands of dollars with this private sort of coaching. So I applied, and. Um, 542 women, I think, applied, and he chose 48, and I was one of them. So I got to work with him, and Jason and Jen, for three months or four months, and uh, yeah, they I achieved every goal I thought I want ever wanted to achieve with um, basically reaching my ideal physique at the time. So that's what that was. But the whole deadlifting thing, yeah. Once I started training um, seriously again, uh, I got to learn the big the big moves, the big um, complex barbell, like the big three, they call them deadlifting, squats, and um, bench press, and well, chin-ups is another one, but that's how I train is multi-joint um, movements with barbells, like just the most bang for your buck kind of thing. And I just train to get stronger, because um, I want to show that women can be strong without getting big and bulky, it's just, a, it's a overhyped myth that just should, needs to die, so I'm happy to be part of, this, on that one. You know, <laughs> part of this movement that um, hopefully is, you know, bringing awareness to women that it's it's good to train this way to be strong. You know, I like to be able to move the furniture and lift the boxes and that sort of thing and, and still be, you know, and, and it, it has given me the physique that I've always wanted. You look so. like you play Wonder Woman too, so I thought yeah. maybe you would want to audition, you know, seriously. Uh, for the role, because I think Gal Gadot, who was selected, she has to go through a year and a half of training just to get to where you are. And I'm thinking, well, you know, here's someone who's already there, right? But there's going to be a lot more super real women roles for well, superhero roles for women coming up. So, you know, yeah. that you're, yeah. you're perfectly uh -huh. poised for it, I think. <laughs> uh, and deadlifting was just so the born to deadlifting on my Twitter was just 
uh, out of all the, the moves, um, I just deadlifting and I just clicked with deadlifting. I I excelled so so much faster than my other lifts, and I ended up uh, my max is two sixty five, which is wow. two, two times my body weight. Um, so it's like my highest one rep max. So that's why I. I <laughs> bigger and more deadlift when it comes to the big three. <laughs> oh, so I know that you're busy, and uh, but we want to get more Twitter followers to you. So tell them where you are on, t- on Twitter. Twitter, I know, but the viewers. Oh, it's yeah. really easy. Well, it's, except for my name is difficult to spell. <laughs> uh, it's Tan Esperanto. T A N I S P A R E N T E A U. Hey, Tanis, thanks. It's a pleasure to meet you. An honor. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. It was great to meet you. Yeah, cool.